Hello everybody, today we are going to take a look at my tabletop arcade collection that I've had since I was a kid. These are all from my original collection um, growing up back in the early 80s. Um, the average age of these things is about 38 years old now, I guess. 39. Um, some cases maybe even 40. I think uh, Galaxy 2 was around 1980. Um, this one here was given to me about 10, 11 years ago uh, when we were doing a meetup in Arizona. Um, it was kind of like a one of the prize giveaway things. Um, I never had this one. Um, a couple of my missing, unfortunately, I, I did have a um, Defender. It was done by the same company who makes this, uh, Intex. Um, that was a really neat little um, device. And funny enough, it made a little cameo appearance in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, Groot was playing with one at one point for like a nanosecond. You'd see it in there. It was That's one of my favorites of these devices. Unfortunately, I don't know where it is. It got lost somewhere in the nether of moves and so forth over the years. Uh, but I've managed to hold on to the majority of these. The only other one I don't have was from the Coleco's. I had a Miss Pac-Man, um, which I did sell back uh, early days of eBay. Uh, at the time, I simply needed new tires on my car. And, um, uh, you know, it was worth enough money that I was able to, to get some tires on my car. Uh, I kind of miss not having it now. Um, I miss having it, rather. It would have been nice to have still had it in my collection. Fortunately, over the years, some of these stickers have come off because of... Um, heat and just wear and tear um some of them are just they're very durable machines overall which is why i think they've lasted as long they, they certainly don't make things like they used to um the donkey kong's still in pretty good shape of course i'm missing the battery compartment um uh, last i checked they all worked um cubert unfortunately is one that the label is peeling here um but and, and they've even got this weird it's, it's, it's this weird it's like the glue's kind of going through and it's peeling a bit and it looks like you can get reproduction stickers for these which is great tron unfortunately has some scratches on the screen uh, i think just from being bumped around in the past at least 10 years or so because these have been together on a move um but anyway i thought i'd try showing some of them off um I, I specifically remember getting these too as a kid even all these years later because these were some of my favorite toys growing up and and i remember just instances and 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 getting them and and for every little occasion um like galaxy 2 here i i got this for christmas and i remember being just so excited it's it's such a cool device um tomi uh made uh, had a lot of these in in um japan like they made tron here you can see the tomi logo on the front there um if I'm not mistaken, Galaxy 2? I, no, I don't think that was a Tomy. It's this company called um, Epoch. And I know in the UK, they have a different label for this. I think it's called Astro Wars. And it's by a company that released their uh, grandstand or something of that nature. Anyway, I'm going to start taking a look at some of these. And I thought I'd show them off. Uh, Qbert here, I already put the batteries in because I don't have a battery lid for this, unfortunately, either. Um, back when I was younger, uh, my siblings would end up playing with them and uh, I'm not going to point fingers, but the battery lids went missing. Um, unless you're Tron, that one's attached, which is awesome. So we're going to take a look first at Cubert here. I'm going to put this down. Hopefully this will stand and won't mess me up. You know, I'll stand for my camera unfortunately it's probably not going to work out let's see there we go so let's bring this one in i'm going to move galaxy 2 out of the way and we're going to slide cubert into view here a little bit and uh cubert was was really cool at the time it was one of my favorite arcade games a very hard game in the arcade i thought but at the same time it it, it played really well and this was a neat little tabletop version coleco made a ton of these uh, U.S. games uh, and, and cabinet little mini format. 
But uh, this one was by a different company whose name actually escapes me. And it's funny because normally these companies have their logos plastered all over the front of these devices, like in here or in the bezel or around. Um, but Qbert, unfortunately, does not. Uh, we have three options here. We have off, we have on, and we have mute because nobody wanted to hear their kids' games making these squeaky, squawky sounds. So let's flip this on. And there we go. Whoop, batteries are, like I said, a little uneven. So there's Qbert. And what you'd have to do is push down the start. And I remember this controller, even back then, was, was not the most sensitive thing. So you'll have to excuse my performance here because I think over the years the contacts have gotten even worse. Let's see, I can get a coily off here. I'm going to take this up. It takes me to the top, just like the arcade. And a ball hit me. The balls are, of course, Kubert's head because these are little pre-printed, I guess you could say. I don't know what the name of the technology is, so to speak. But the art for everything, all the characters, is embedded in, in all of these little parts of the screen. And the machine just lights up whatever is necessary at the time and fills them in. So there was a lot of creative license taken in terms of trying to get the artwork to reflect the arcade within the means of the technology. So um, the Miss Pac-Man one, for instance, you'd always see Miss Pac-Man's head inside the ghost's body. And then the, the heads would disappear when you knew you hit a power pellet that would turn them into ghosts you could eat. This was really a neat little thing at the time. It was very accurate to the arcade. It's certainly one of my favorites. I really have to push on this sometimes. And I'm sure it's just some cleaning underneath here would really help this out. But anyway, that's that's for the most part how the game works. Now you got to change these back. And what'll happen is in the next level or so, you're gonna have to go back over, back and forth, uh, doubling the, the, the amount of times you have to go over to cubes to change their color. It really ramps up the difficulty. So anyway, that's Qbert. So what I'm gonna do is recycle the batteries from, from this one, since they're just gonna be spring-loaded. And they lie around me. Yeah, you can see them. <laughs> I remember just putting it when I was a kid putting the lid on this I mean I was a little kid and trying to put that lid on the place these batteries was like like a bear trap it was crazy um I'm trying to see who made the, I you know what I think this was Parker Brothers if I'm not mistaken because they had the license for all the home um the home machines from and 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 different versions of, of the arcade game I'm going to put that back here. Excuse the, this is just my iron table. Nothing fancy. I'm not a high priced, uh, high income uh, YouTuber. So I'm doing what I can do here. I tried to clean up this console a little bit. I had some dirt in here. It was really driving me crazy. I think it came out pretty decent. Um, fortunately, you can't get rid of these scuffs and scratches here. These scuffs and scratches probably from, from hitting the other machines because I kind of kept them together and they got rumbled around underneath here is really neat Tron this first of all this is a really this is easily probably my favorite this and galaxy 2 are, are all my my old, I guess in defender the three of them but it's hard to choose one this was great though because it had three different is it three three different yeah because you had the cycles you had the fight like, sark at the ring game and you also had to get the disc inside the MCP which was almost like a boss fight at the time. Um, of course, I mean, you know, as boss as you can get. Um, control, speed, shoot. And uh, what's really cool about this is on the back here, and it makes it, you can kind of see this is, you know, almost like a clear, smoky uh, plastic. You can see this printed looking circuitry. And right here, if the camera will focus for me. Uh, World of Tron. I always thought that was so cool as a kid. You can see the little label inside right here. And I, I just thought that was a neat little touch. I really tried to go with the times. And 1981 Walt Disney Company. 
Productions. So uh, Tomy, once again, very popular in Japan, Japanese electronics gaming, little toy company. They're still around today. They make they make the latrine sets and matchbox type of vehicles. This was great because the, the battery contacts are still nice and clean. Actually, the battery contacts are pretty clean in all of these. I, I did take really good care of them as a kid. Um, that's a testament to their to their um, how how well they were built. I think they expected kids to be knocking these things around when they were kids. So here comes Tron. Let's turn this on. Entering the world of Tron. So as I was saying, this game is set up in three different little mini games, so to speak. The first one's the iconic light cycle scene. And what you can do is hold down the speed button and then you gotta cut this guy off. Normally I can, I used to be able to just, there you go, got him. You'd be able to just go and at the right moment, just push the direction and to hold this, you can alternate your speed here. This allows you to speed up a little bit. As you can see, that guy was starting to flicker ahead. If I, so it adds a little bit of gameplay panache to this. Let's see. If I can. It's so cool. I mean, this is really neat at the time. I mean, you got to realize this is this game's 39 years old. I mean, we didn't have Game Boys. Game and Watch wasn't even out yet for crying out loud. Nintendo was wasn't even on the minds of anybody at this point. I mean, the only Nintendo we had at the time was Donkey Kong. That's the only reason people knew of Donkey Kong or Nintendo. So this is pretty state of the art. Let's see if I can get through most of these games. I mean, it's almost like muscle memory playing these. I haven't played this in probably 15, 20 years, but I still remember. Now on this one, you have to, you're fighting Sark. And you have to catch the little disc. If you miss, as you can see, the little ring below disappears. And you can kind of put a little bit of English and spin on the, on the disc as you throw it. Oh, I missed it. It's a little hard to play through the camera. I'm doing my best here. And... It looks easy right now, but it does ramp up. It gets a lot more difficult. Ah, it's getting to the, it's getting to the very end here. Let's see. There we go. Okay, he's beaten. Now we move on to the MCP, as you can see on the right, and um, you have so much time. Oh, that's the other thing. The rings that you have left is is reflective of the time you get to throw your disc and defeat the MCP. And I got them on the first try. Uh, only because I played this so much, I know the timing pretty well. Um, <laughs> I didn't really have a chance to explain. But the ring game, the, the little rings at the bottom of the screen here, whatever you finish off with the Sark battle end up being the amount of time you get to get that disc in there. So then it, it just repeats. As you can see, that guy's getting a little more ahead of me there because it's getting a little more difficult. Um, speed is is an option no longer at the higher difficulty levels. You just got to wail that button. And you can kind of try to cut him off. And he catches up to it. Now I died there because he crashed into me. Anyway, that's Tron, one of my favorites, and I'm so glad it works. I wish I could get rid of these scratches, um, but yeah, I'm just glad the thing boots still. So we're going to take the batteries out of this. Sorry, I only have one set of C batteries here. I'm a little unprepared in that case. This is kind of a spur mode thing. And we're going to move on to Galaxy 2. Uh, this one I have not tested in a while, and I'm hoping it still boots. Uh, it's still pretty clean in there. It's not too bad. A little grump right here. Um... Made in Japan. You don't see that much anymore. Back in the day, it was always a joke. Oh, it's made in Japan, made in Japan. Nowadays, it's made in China. That's Everything's made in China. But made in Japan, to me, that meant quality. <laughs> and now these are pretty spring-loaded, too. You can see residue of, of tape from when I was a kid trying to keep these things in here. These coils were so freaking tight. 
tight on these batteries. I'm hoping to stay in. I'm going to slowly move it over. Oh, one other neat thing that this shares with Tron is you have little battery adapter uh, plug. Oh, there we go, the batteries. Just poop them out. All right, hold on. So we're going to flip this over again. Hopefully this will work. Yep, we're good. Only problem is the screen's so weird. I'm going to have to try to... Turn it. Ah, they fell out. Fortunately, my camera stand's not that great. And the screen's got a weird angle to it. So I'm hoping I can kind of do both here. So that should work for me. Galaxy 2 is a Galaxian Galaga type clone. Um, actually, I want to say this came out before Gal Galaga. This is a, this is just a Gal Galaxian kind of clone. Um, you hit the start button down here. You still select. You can select your speed, your difficulty. We got three, four. Okay, let me see if I can figure this out because this is. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do this too well. So. Start button working. There it goes. Okay, this is going to be really hard to see. This screen is a little beat. You move your ship. The nah, batteries aren't really staying together for me. Let's see. Try one more time here. So you have this little rocket at the bottom here. Here's your ship. And I died because it's a little hard to play and film at the same time. Let's see. There he goes. He's moving back and forth. Actually, the right is pretty rough. I'm going to have to maybe see if I can get in there and clean that out. It's moving, but... So you shoot those little guys at the top. And they dive bomb you. And I, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get far enough into this to show you all the extra modes. Because it's so hard to play with... But the first stage is more or less your basic Galaxian clone here. You're dodging bullets, you're shooting the aliens, and you got these little dive bombers. And once you clear these guys out, you get the second phase of the game. Because all good games like this, like, I'd say, I'd argue this is even better than Galaxian, which is what it's a clone of, because... In Galaxian, you just did the same thing over and over. What's cool about this is you had different little moods, almost almost like Phoenix. Actually, I want to say this is more like Phoenix, now that I think about it, which was vastly superior in Galaxian. Phoenix is just fantastic because it gave you a little bit of um, change up to the gameplay. Now, here's the last guy I got to fight. Let's see if he'll just kind of walk into my path. I don't think I'm going to get him. It's hard with one button, hand. There you go, good. Oh. Okay, so now we get these couple guys here, I think, that are going to dive bomb me. Sometimes if you, you, you can really cheese this game if you time it right, but unfortunately it's hard with one hand. Ah. So much harder with one hand. I could play this in my sleep when I was a kid, but come on, get me to the next stage. I want to show you everybody the next stage. If you time it right, it's great because you can kind of get them to just kind of fall into your shots. There you go. Like that. Now, now these guys are going to go back and forth. And once you clear them out, you go into the next phase. This is why I think this is better than Galaxian. Ah, I just reset it. The battery's nudged. All right. Anyway, what what was great is after that mood, you had this cool... Um, your ship would take off. And it ended up becoming a bit of a... Oh, come on, stay in there. 
a bit of a lunar lander kind of clone, which was really cool. Uh, the lunar land, your ship would take off and you would have to hold your, your fire button as thrust. And you only had so much fuel and your ship would slowly descend onto this little moving pad back and forth. Half of your ship would be floating back and forth along the bottom and your little rocket part, top half would be coming down. You'd hold the fire button thrust and you would have to line it up just right to land it. And then the, the gameplay would repeat. But it's just really cool. I mean, it added, for, for what it was, this, this, this ancient technology, they really crammed a lot of gameplay in there. Um, so, real quick, let's take a look. Everybody's, I'm sure, seen these. These are the Coleco. Coleco made quite a few of these. Um, Gal uh, Galaxian, Frogger, Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man. They're very popular. They sold millions of these stupid things. Um, I think this one works. They, they should all work. I, mean, I, I don't see any reason they shouldn't. This is another one with these missing the battery. Uh, but Coleco was on a roll back in the mid early 80s with the ColecoVision. And these little mini tablet tablets. Let's see the batteries are falling out. I may not be able to work this one too well. Let's see. These are the most common ones you can find. Um, I remember 8-Bit Guy a few years ago on his YouTube channel actually did a, I'm gonna try something here. Let me see if I can slide. This actually may not work. I'm not getting it to boot. Maybe the terminals need to be cleaned off. Let's see. Oh, there we go. We got life. Only problem is I can't get to lay down. This is so embarrassing. Let's see. Now, I'm really not going to be able to hold this and play this at the same time. I'm just going to give you a shot of the screen real quick. Um... Yes, King, uh, Don, King Kong. Donkey Kong is purple, as is Pauline. Um, the graphics are very rudimentary. What's great is nowadays you can go over to Walmart or Target and they still sell these little LCD games that use the same technology. Um, it, it's like they're brackets and they make it look like the arcade. Um, but not as cool as this. I mean, this this is this is this, this this is trying to look like the official cabinet, which is awesome. It's got the old old Nintendo art, Mario art. Uh, I, mean, I love this. This is so cool. I mean, this was back when when Pauline was this blonde, um, or the girl. <laughs> um, let me see if I can get this to play at all. Let's start here. Let's see if I put this down. Camera. Okay, I'm gonna hit start. Doop. Plays a neat little rendition of the Mario theme, Nintendo Donkey Kong theme, and uh, here comes a barrel. So the effects were really cool. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't gonna work yet. Think, oh, well, there it goes. I just put it down, and of course, now it's down, and now I'm having trouble with the camera again. I need to get myself a better stand. This thing's ancient. Okay, let's try this again. Not the best angle, but this is where I wanted it to be, more or less. Let's see. You can see them all right at the bottom. I'm going to go up the steps, ladders. I think I just fell off the ledge. Went over too much. Now, remember, people, this was... About 38 years ago, this game. This is before Game Boy. It's before Game and Watch. Um, I mean, this is this was the state of the art. Uh, these things were about fifty dollars. Um, this was a Christmas present, obviously, at that price. Galaxy Two here was a Christmas present. Um, Tron, I remember getting specifically at um, KB Toys on clearance. I think it was like. Twelve ninety nine or something. Um, Cubert was the most expensive. I remember that sucker was like sixty dollars or something like of that nature. Uh, but for the most part, these were the big Christmas presents for me as a kid. And being an only child for the first ten years of my life, and also the only grandson um, to an old-fashioned grandmother, uh, I was spoiled. <laughs> I got a lot of her presents from these from her. I'll take these out one more time. Actually, they can stay out because this one, this Galaxian 2, 
is great because it's got a nice compartment. It's still sealed. Batteries are in there. Should probably get in there and clean it out a little more. Um, what's great is this is another one where you have an AC adapter. This one's a little different though. It almost looks like it needs its own um, specific adapter that uh, you probably had to buy specifically for these these um, Intex games here. So little little scratches there. Um, Donkey Kong also had one of these adapters. If I... No, no, no. I remember now. Donkey Kong, the Coleco, they made a... Um, they actually sold this cool pack. I had one. Um, and it was funny because a few years ago on eBay, I saw one. I said, oh, my God, I remember that. Um, they look like C batteries. They look like just like regular old C batteries. But they were real light because I think they were meant just to um, conduct the current throughout all the, 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 the battery uh, connections in, in this. And it had a little wire coming out of the back. And that wire was attached to a plug that you could plug into the wall. And that would give you your adapter. Uh, unlike these guys, these here, where you could just plug in any old... Actually, I think you can still get the adapters. These, these are pretty common adapters. I mean, I think these, these aren't far off from maybe being for a Genesis uh, adapter. Um, so anyway, back to, back to what I was getting. So Galaxian 2 looks like no relation to the actual... Galaxium from Namco, by the way. Um, so we got here, we got a mute, an off sound option, and that just turns the whole game on. Fire left and right. And I guess if you're a lefty or righty, you got fire left and right over here too. Although there is a two player mode. So I guess if one person wanted to be over there, one person wanted to be over there. It kind of reminds me of a Lynx, uh, a Generation 1 Atari Lynx. To be quite honest with you, this thing's a bit of a brick, man. I'll tell you, wow. But I could see this sitting in the back seat of the car playing this. This is a neat one. I, I never had this one as a kid, so it was really nice to have gotten this uh, from uh, Entex, man. Uh, you, if you're watching, you'll know who you are. Um, when we went out to Arizona for a big group meet of, 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 of mutual friends. So um, Entex had this neat little, almost like bullseye logo. They also made Defender, which once again I, is one of my favorites. I wish I had that here to show you. So we're going to switch this on. It's very similar to Galaxy 2. You got your left and right controls here. And you got a fire up here. And you just go back and forth and you try to shoot these. It's a lot more difficult though, I think. Now I know uh, Shane R. Monroe of Monroe World was showing off a similar game. By Mattel Electronics called Battlestar Galactica, based on the old TV series, and um, he just put up a, a video recently showing off Merlin and a lot of other cool games like these uh, from the time. And uh, Mattel Electronics was another big company. They made the the um, the little LCD football game, and but anyway, the the, the Battlestar Galactica is very similar to this in a way. Because you had these bullets coming down. Very hard game. I just realized that. I have it on skill level 2. There's a skill button here. That's probably the problem. Let's try this again one more time. With... Okay. I bet this is a little easier now. Yeah. Oh, this is much easier. There was a lot more bullets on the screen before. I mean, I, I, I prefer a more of a... You know, start yeah, a little easy. Get through a couple of the first rounds, and then we ramp it up naturally. I don't, I don't want to just get thrown into it, unless you're Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man is unplayable to me these days, unless it's got some kind of a, a speed up button. But anyway, uh, that's a quick little rundown of my uh, tabletop arcade mini games here. Um, I have a couple pocket ones that I can show you. They they are not Game & Watch. They were out before Game & Watch. And I'm going to try to do a video of them next time. Uh, I just thought I'd break these out from the attic, get them cooled off from the heat, see if they still worked. And they do. They still work because back then they made things to last. And uh, these games are certainly lasting. And no matter how primitive they may look, 
deep down, they still have a lot of fun gameplay that needs to be appreciated. And, uh, I really enjoyed these. I mean, these really made long car rides a, um, a way to cope as a kid, especially when you're 10 years old. Uh, for you kids nowadays that have your Switches and your your iPads and um, even your, your DS and 3DS and heck, even Game Boy, you all understand what it's like to be on those car rides, sitting in the back seat with your folks. Well, back then we didn't have any of those devices. We had these. And this was as close as it was going to get to playing any kind of games in the car. And uh, unfortunately, reading a book isn't always a good option. A lot of people get sick doing it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, it's kind of a spur moment thing. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.